I love seeing everybody's beautiful faces here this morning, and I love gathering powerful women together to talk about this topic of feminine energy. So I'm super excited to dive deeper today. Uh, my name is Sarah, so welcome. If this is your first time tuning in with me, I'm a feminine, divine feminine embodiment coach and divine feminine leadership coach for female spiritual entrepreneurs. Um, but feminine embodiment in general for women, you don't have to necessarily be on the entrepreneurial journey. This is for women waking up worldwide that are really called to tap more into their feminine essence. And so, so before we dive deeper, I just wanted to say that this is not gender specific. What I'm speaking to today is energy. So feminine and masculine energy as well, because masculine energy kind of falls under the radar with this rise in the collective of feminine energy, but it's actually two sides of the same coin. And so they coexist and you actually have to have both integrated in order to come into full alignment and embodiment. So it is energy. It's not gender specific. All genders have feminine and masculine energy. However, we can predominantly resonate more with one core energy than another, but it doesn't have to be gender specific. So, so that being said, um, I'd love to hear in the chat box from you ladies, just like where you're at with feminine and masculine energy, as far as like learning about this, just if you could drop a one, if you're brand new or 10, if you're more advanced. So 10 would be like, you teach this stuff and you're here to help hold sacred space and learn and share and you already know it and one you're brand new so that helps me sort of gauge the conversation on where to focus more based on where everybody's at on their unique journey so I'm going to check out the chat box here real quick a one one five three three six seven seven okay perfect so there's a lot of uh, women that are brand new to this. I would love to know whether in and one, one to five, you're still, you know, um, getting familiar with these kind of um, topics. And I would love to know what really resonated with you the most that caused you to book this call to begin with. I mean, this this call specifically is about helping to identify feminine and masculine energy, what that is, and also break toxic loops and cycles and come more into full embodiment. But um, if you could share in the chat box, like what was it that really was like your thing that maybe you're going through a transition, maybe you had a breakup, maybe you're just being called to open up to more feminine energy, maybe it's your workspace, a career where you feel a lot of masculine energy and you want to balance that out, like whatever the case may be, I would love to, to know a little bit about uh, what resonated with you to make you want to block out time today, which is very valuable for you and sh actually show up. Uh, to tune into this kind of stuff. I hear I live heavily in my masculine and need to understand the femme to learn what to meet, what I need to welcome in. Okay, perfect. Looking for balance. Okay. Thank you for sharing. I want to build on anything that helps more women be more confident and authentic. Ooh, I love that. Perfect. I'm studying this in, in, at university. I'm just trying to learn more. Ooh, at university. That's interesting. That's interesting. Perfect. Okay, so let's dive deep into this and let's see, I uh, got another one. Um, for your relationship in which I felt I was required to dwell in my masculine much more than I desired and I spend a lot of time in the masculine as a business owner. It is very masculine dominant to grow a business. There's a lot of strategy, of results, actions sometimes, but balancing business with the feminine energy is really super key actually. Um, and she's a single mom, so organizing, structuring, and leading very much masculine dominance of uh, uh, qualities, organizing, structuring, and leading. Uh, I want to embrace my feminine more as I reconnect with my myself and prepare for future conscious relationships. Perfect. Beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, I will uh, go into just a little bit about what got me here in my background a little bit? Um, I, I know there's a lot of new faces, so you may be new to my world. So prior to really stepping into feminine embodiment, um, coaching and mentorship online, um, I was a real estate agent for like 12 years being a, a realtor. Uh, it was also a very masculine dominant kind of energy. Uh, but I played with feminine and masculine energy in there towards the end of the career. But at the very beginning, it was very much a hustle and grind for me. Um, actually, before we get into that, I wanted to share who's feeling this, right? Like the collective energy, when I say collective, this is both men and women are really feeling 
I just want to say that there's a who's feeling that there's a rise in being more conscious and more aware of self. But before we talk about, before I go into my background a little bit, being more conscious and aware of self. What I'm noticing and the reason I call this together is because there is a paradigm shift occurring where we are being called to tap into more of the essence of who we truly are and come into more conscious awareness of our true nature. Um, and that's really what the feminine essence points to. And so there's a shift happening where what we're going to notice moving forward is old ways of doing things are no longer going to work for us. So masculine dominant ways of force competition or uh, overaction or more egoic driven tendencies outside of ourselves in order to acquire or quote unquote manifest spiritual community loves word manifest egoic tendencies to try to manifest or achieve things from looking outside of ourselves, trying to fix the 3D or trying to manipulate the 3D or trying to, um, uh, yeah, manipulate is a good word for it. Uh, and not in a negative connotation, but in a controlling power, overpowering way to try to fix externalized things in order to make us feel safe and whole or complete or validated in some way. And so the reason I call this uh, powerful group together is because there is a calling to wake up to more of our true essence and our own conscious awareness of who we truly are in our divine nature. And as we continue to rise in vibration and frequency and conscious awareness as a collective, the old ways of doing things, the old world, the old manipulative or egocentric or self-centered or externalized ways of doing things, which is really just a distorted masculine energy is on the way out and it will lead to um, oftentimes dead ends, blocks, roadblocks, um, and the opposite of what you actually want to create in your life because we're being guided to really come into true alignment with the essence of who we are and our divine nature and come into alignment and be able to create a soul aligned success, I call it success from the inside out, which does inner and outer success. So inner prosperity and also outer prosperity, but that outer prosperity that we all seek, whether that be in the form of a relationship or a career or a lifestyle or material things will come as a byproduct of us coming into true alignment with who we truly are and surrendering to that and trusting in that and owning that, especially our own worthiness, divine worthiness. And then the outside world will repopulate and start to reflect that in our experience so seeking 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 for externalized validation outside of ourselves is going to backfire and so this was so a lot of lessons that have um, crossed my path through this process and that's where sort of segues into you know where how I got here so I'll just share that real quick um you know, so 12 years in real estate, it was very much a hustle and grind. Um, I was completely burned out. I was overwhelmed. I was always seeking, seeking outside of myself for external validation, safety, or security. So I was always chasing that carrot. So it was very much a hustle and a grind. There was never enough clients. There was never enough money coming in. As soon as there was something coming in, there was always more that I needed. Um, it was really chasing that that carrot outside of myself, um, actually zero self-care, feeling very guilty when I actually took time off for myself. So I rarely did. I would go from client to client. I would eat my meals in my car. I had zero downtime. Um, and then when I did have moments later in the, at night or something like that, where I wasn't like working or glued to my computer or something like that, I would numb out to whether it's a glass of wine or a Netflix binge or anything other than connecting with my essence. So it was always externalized, um, dr driven motivation to achieve more, be more, have more. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, so I was a workaholic, always on the go and really carrying the weight of the world on my shoulders. I had to do everything. So I was a much, very much a control freak. So I didn't trust assistance. I didn't outsource the way I needed to. Um, so I was always doing more work than I needed to. I didn't trust my partner at the time. Um, it was just a lot of controlling energy. So um, that was very, 
obviously it's very restrictive energy and the, con the control was really a lack of being able to trust, being able to trust myself. And if I'm not able to trust myself, I'm not able to trust others. I'm also not able to trust life and the universe to show up for me. There was a total lack of trust. So it was like, I was always working, trying to one up my experience by going not with a, with the flow, not with the flow and with the universe helping me with the energy of the universe and with life itself helping me. I was always trying to circumvent, overcome, you know, micromanage and control things. And that was really just a deeply rooted lack of inner trust and a deeply rooted lack of feeling safe inwardly. Feminine is all about feeling safe and all about trusting herself, feminine energy. This is about coming into alignment with your true nature, um, which, so I'm just going to, we'll dive more into feminine and masculine qualities in a little bit, but the feminine is all is about feeling safe in her body, feeling safe to trust, feeling, trusting, you know, life to support you, knowing she is provided for, knowing she is divinely guided, knowing that life shows up for her. So there's no lack mindset. There's no scarcity mindset. There's no fear driven tendencies when you're fully embodied in your feminine energy, right? So, so that being said, I eventually created this facade, Miss Independent. I can do everything myself. I don't have to rely on others. So I was very much like a boss babe in hustle mode, but really that was just another facade to really keep people out, not let people in. I don't have to trust too much. I can control my environment and I can do everything myself to a degree. And so then I don't have to rely on others and I don't have to be eventually let down and things like that, which is what the fears were inside, which was what was keeping me from really being able to rest in my feminine essence. So lack of self-care, feminine energy is also very much into self-nurturing, really taking care of yourself, taking care of your, being connected to your body, connected to your energy, connected to your emotions, not dismissing yourself and doing what I was doing, which was a complete dismissal. So I was often as a control freak, uh, when things don't go your way, you get really easily irritated um, and things like that. So I was easily moved to irritation or anger because I was also operating from this stress mode, which is very, um, it's the opposite of being really rested with a, a calm nervous system. Your nervous system is constantly getting spikes of cortisol, which is a lot of this hyper-masculine energy, um, which eventually led to health issues, a breakdown of my health, um, immunity uh, was severely affected because, you know, stress and cortisol relates to your gut health. And so my immunity went down, lots of digestion issues, IBS, SIBO, candida, leaky gut, food allergies, started to get the flu all the time, still out there working, showing houses, even while I have the flu, not taking care of myself, which eventually led to pneumonia because my lungs started to fill up with water because I had like shot my immune system. So I had to go to the emergency room. So long story short, um, I was also in a non-committal relationship that wasn't serving me and wasn't respecting me and valuing me the way I truly desired in my heart space, but I was still staying in it. It was a very, you know, staying in toxic loops and or staying in misaligned loops and relationships where I was not being, it was not in highest alignment for me. So a lot of codependency. And then to top it off, there was a layer of perfectionism where I had to put on a good face for the world. I had, everything was always fine. I would tell everybody everything was, you know, oh, I'm good, I'm fine. There's always painting a rosier picture, but deep down I was crumbling inside. Um, and so ultimately what I really wanted was peace and ease and a connection with a really like a state of well being, freedom you know, well-being, peace, ease, and a healthy relationship. And in that period of my life, I had zero. So um, of that, so I was in the complete opposite. So I was in hyper-masculine energy and I had a total lack of feminine energy. And that's not an accident because they are two sides of the same coin. So they go hand in hand. So if you're really depleted in your feminine essence and you're really distorted in your feminine essence, by not owning your worth, not not feeling, not tapped into your intuition and some of the qualities that we'll touch in a second, not honoring yourself, not owning your value, depleting your energy, all the things, not really honoring yourself. 
you're going to also be in distorted masculine energy. Masculine energy is what's going to keep you stuck in the hustle and the overdoing and the overactioning and the reaching outside of yourself and the seeking external validation. Um, so, and really the whole, um, the cycle of, you know, re, you know, the men that I was attracting that were non-committal was really just a reflection of me not feeling vulnerable enough to open my heart because I didn't feel safe enough to open my heart. Again, the feminine deeply requires to feel safe and she has to feel safe in her feminine in order to blossom. So if there's anything that's ever caused you to guard yourself and shut down and feel like it's not safe or you're not. Uh, it's not safe to really be present in your heart and, and things like that, then we will attract the relationships that will mirror that. And so I would attract non-committal relationships, even though I deeply craved in intimacy at the time with a partner, I would attract non-committal relationships or people that weren't able to love me in the way I truly desired because I wasn't comfortable in receiving love. My heart was not open. My heart was completely guarded with a wall. So there's a difference between a wall and a boundary. The feminine and the masculine, when you come into alignment, really masters the ability to have healthy boundaries. The feminine coming into your value of who you truly are, your inner essence, while the masculine setting healthy boundaries because that masculine is the protective energy. But if you're coming from distorted feminine energy, I say distorted instead of wounded because at our core, we're not wounded at our core, we're um, we're at our core, we're whole, but we have belief systems and conditioning that can keep us believing that we're wounded in some way. So the distorted feminine energy will cause the masculine energy again to be distorted. So the masculine, instead of drawing a line with a healthy boundary that lets the good stuff in and holds the stuff that's not in alignment out, will just be a wall and it'll be over protection. Does that, so we'll dive into the actual feminine masculine qualities in a second, but so as soon as I wrap up here, what, how I got to where I was, so, or where I am now. So all of that was happening. I call it my perfect storm where my, I ended my engagement. My health was crumbling. My finances were completely tied to a stress fueled cycle. There was never enough. It was always up and down and up and down and up and down and a lot of hustle. So everything across the board was exactly opposite of what I truly craved in my life. So my solution was, of course, to numb out. Um, and I joke around now, but I said, I I I'm just going to sell my house and move to Costa Rica and just not deal with any of this. I'm just going to start fresh and go do yoga on the beach. Like, that's what I wanted to do. That was my solution. <laughs> that didn't happen because I didn't have, I, that didn't happen. I did end up traveling the world after that and going, you know, just exploring and stuff. But that was my solution at the time, which was just another egoic way to numb out to the situation. The problem is, is that you're always going to take yourself wherever you go. And so this, the cycles will always repeat. The patterns will always be there no matter where you plant yourself. That's just how this works. And so what did happen was that I really started to dive into personal development, self-love, self-care kind of stuff. And I cleaned up my diet vegan for a while, clean nutrition, non-GMO, started meditating, energy healing work, actually got certified in yoga and actually certified in energy healing and stuff like that. So I started on that quote unquote spiritual path to really come into more alignment, which did help and alleviate things on the physical level quite a bit. We tend to attack the physical level because it's what we can see. It's the tangible 3D world which we'll get to this in a second, but the masculine energy represents the tangible 3D world that we can see. The feminine energy represents the unseen, the subtle realm and our true essence. So because we live in a masculine dominant society that is always focused external, of course, we're gonna deal a lot of times with the physical first. And so dealing with that and seeing results, that helped and moved me along. But I noticed I was still easily, um, uh, easily caught up in the stress cycle, easily caught up in not honoring my time and taking care of myself, still having a revolving door of men that would like non-commit, abandon, things like that. Um, really caught any, any, still seeking outside of myself for external validation or success in some way. 
or some form of safety or security, whether that be in a relationship, career, more money, different living environment, or, uh, or, or whatever the case may be. So I was still doing that, even though I was quote unquote spiritual now, and I was on the spiritual path, and that was helping to a degree, um, that, can be a, that can be a path that you're on forever and still never actually get down to fully coming into the alignment with who you truly are. Because your spiritual path can easily start to put band-aids on things that keep us still from doing the inner work. So even though I was going to yoga class, I was using yoga as a band-aid, to be honest, a lot of times. And I was using, you know, to, um, to even though it can be a very good tool, the ego can use it as a way to just put a bandaid on things and then move through your day, but still have the same cycles repeating. Okay. I don't know if that makes sense or resonates with some people, but whether it's fitness or anything that you would deem quote unquote good, uh, the ego can latch onto that and then use it as a form of validation, which then just keeps you on this perpetual loop of always needing to prove your worthiness still and always constantly trying to come back to center and finally come into alignment with your wholeness when actually. You are already whole. And that's the big secret. You are already whole. There's actually nothing to quote unquote do to be any more whole than you already are. It's about coming into being th this though. You can only be it. You can't do more to bring yourself any closer to your wholeness. And that's what the, the, the spiritual trap can lead to, a seeking of wholeness still outside of yourself in tools, techniques, strategies, and modalities. Not to say those are bad. I still do yoga. I still do energy, meditation. Sometimes I still do those things, and they all can be used as useful tools. But there's a certain point on the journey where also the tools can become a crutch. And you're still faced with the same the same you're faced with the same thing which is coming face to face with yourself again in the mirror and who you truly are and what's looking beyond what's looking through your eyes and coming into alignment with the source of who you are which is I don't want to pass this off on people but as a projection or like an assumption you know so to only take it if it resonates but I in my core I believe and life has shown us me that we are all connected we are all one, we are already whole, and that we are unconditional love at our source. And if we, and it's to the degree that we um, are detached from our own divine essence is to the degree that we will suffer outside in the externalized world seeking it in some form. And it may put a bandaid on things for a while. You can seek success and find success through the ego. And you can find comforts through the ego. And you can find safety and security through the ego. But ultimately, it will only last for so long. There's plenty of people out there that are actually have acquired all of the successes that you could think one could acquire in this human experience. You know, let's say a celebrity, right? Money, cars. Uh, physical appearances and blah 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 and all the things and they're still miserable and there's a lot of celebrities that will speak to that I think Jim Carrey said it because he's waking up to his divine essence he's he is in alignment with his his essence and uh true essence and said I hope everyone gets everything they've ever wanted in life so they can realize that that's not it And so what we're doing right now as a society is we are, tra we are transcending and there's a paradigm shift occurring where we are transcending the ego dominant ways of existing, the distorted masculine energy ways of existing, of achieving, of obtaining, of, of, of having the life experience that we want, which is totally valid. The true heart desires that you have for your life are is your soul essence speaking to you? Those are perfectly fine desires to have. 3D desires, manifested desires, those are perfect. But the manner in which you acquire those in your life is changing, especially as the, the frequency and the consciousness continues to rise and the old ways will no longer work, especially if you're waking up to this because your soul is ready to wake up to this. And so you'll, you'll experience more roadblocks and um, you'll experience... Um, ease and flow when you align more with this 
And when you come more from ego or masculine dominant energy, trying to control or manipulate externalized things in order to get the well being or the feeling inside of wholeness or completeness or safety or love, you're going to hit roadblock and what I call tower moments, right? Tower moments is when shit hits the fan, but it's actually a crumbling that is necessary in order for your foundation to come into alignment so you can build from a strong foundation. Because we can't build from the ego anymore. We can't build from a false sense of security because what we're building is a house of cards that will eventually crumble. And so the soul is like coming in with a wrecking ball. Um, and I'm not saying that, you know, everybody experiences this in different ways, but the soul will come in with a wrecking ball to break up things that are not in alignment, that are not rooted in love, that are not rooted in worthiness, that are not rooted in freedom and flow and ease and peace and abundance and all of the things that is your true nature. Um, in order to make way, so what looks like a devastation at first is actually an opening. So I don't know how many of you have probably experienced this where the breakdown is oftentimes a breakthrough, even though when you're going through the midst of it, and dark night of the soul or an ego death or the transformational tower moments that when shit hits the fan, it's not pleasant, especially because the ego really wants to grip on to the familiar, whether that be the relationship or the career or the job or the life circumstance or the situation. And the more we latch on to it, needing this power and control to keep us safe in what we appear to be safe, the more suffering happens. When you start to surrender and trust and allow and tap into your heart and your intuition and your soul essence, which is feminine qualities, then things will still fall away, but you're not as you're not attached to them for your identity because you're so connected to your your sacred heart, your inner heart space that you're allowing things with bravery and courage, uh, very aligned masculine qualities bravery courage right um instead of the the, the uh, distorted one that wants to try to like um push it away and, and ignore it or, or whatever and so it's oftentimes the things that we think um are the things that are the worst things that happen to our life turn out to be the best things sometimes and then we look back in hindsight and we realize that we're grateful for the experience because if we didn't go through it we wouldn't have got to where we were and it was and it was a necessary part of the journey and i'm not saying that suffering is a necessary part of the journey it is it is often quite an earmark in this spiritual awakening process but we are moving into a phase where i don't believe we have to suffer as anymore there are higher frequencies available to us now um there are more people waking up there are, there's higher frequencies and so there is a short path and a long path to this and the short path is all right the long path is the one of more struggle more suffering you still get to where you're going you're still going to come home to yourself eventually your true essence your feminine essence who you truly are but it's do we want to take the long path that's an uphill battle that's a lot of struggle and strife and suffering um, that's constantly fighting or rejecting or trying to manipulate situations outside of ourselves in order to try to control and latch on so the ego can keep the steering wheel on your life or do you want to surrender and trust and allow and let divine will step in and take control of the steering wheel and there's an energetic shift that occurs within when this starts to happen that releases control surrenders control starts to trust the unseen world the forces beyond this physical 3d experience the life force energy that pumps through you like you start to really fully own the trust within and the trust without the trust in the universe so as within so without an inner trust then cultivates an outer trust as within so without as above so below and as you start to cultivate this trust you start to move into synchronicity and flow where everything starts to align for you without you even having to put any effort in. You may have had an aligned action pop up. That's a masculine action that pops up, but it's an aligned masculine action that pops up because you're intuitively tapped in to your divine essence and your intuition, which is your compass. And then all of a sudden an idea comes and it's an action and that action you take it because you're guided to 
And it happens to be the most aligned action that gives you the highest and greatest good for all involved in the situation. And this is when the synchronicities will start to flow and pick up and you'll be living in a state of ease and peace, regardless of what's happening outside, because there's such a strong level of trust and surrender happening inwardly and, ex and externally. So we're flipping the script on the entire narrative as a collective right now on an entire way of being and existing in this 3D world. We're flipping the script and we're turning it around and we're coming from the inside out now, if that makes sense. So I just shared a lot and I want to see that if anybody wants to raise their hand, as you know, I have a full disclaimer, if you raise your hand, you'll be on YouTube on the replay because whoever speaks will be seen um, or you can throw your chat box. I'll check the chat box if you have a question um, or a comment or anything like that. If any of this was resonating, I'd love to know. And then we can dive into maybe some more feminine, masculine qualities. I know we had a lot of ones on the call. So I really want to dive into really being more clear on feminine, feminine essence and masculine essence within, which again is not gender specific. So let me go ahead and see. No. Perfect. Okay, perfect. So let's dive into that. So let's dive into, so I sort of touched on this as you gathered, the feminine energy represents the subtle realm, the unseen um, essence of who we truly are. The masculine represents the externalized world of form. Um, it also within ourselves has very specific qualities, feminine, and masculine energy. So we're going to be, let's talk about the inner qualities first that we embody when we're in alignment or misalignment with feminine and masculine energy. Um, so feminine energy is going to be tapping into your intuition, your, it's very fluid, uh, it's very flowing, when you think of nature, energy is very flowing and it's very fluid. Nature is the perfect example of the divine sacred feminine, right? So it's very intuitive. There's an intuitive intelligence to nature. Everything's happening exactly how it should. There's no forcing. It's just, it is what it is. It's naturally happening. So it's very fluid. It's very creative, right? There's constantly new things being birthed. Um, it's very creative. That's the, that's the, the feminine side. Feminine is also very sensitive, um, sensual, uh, expressive, uh, <clears throat> empowered from within, uh, connected to your beingness. So it's really at the core, 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 your feminine essence is your beingness, your beingness. It's internalized, it's the subtle realm, it's very vulnerable, it's receiving energy, it's your receiving, feminine is very receiving, it's creative, I think I said that already, it's nurturing. And there's another flip side to the feminine, which we might be able to speak about today, but this is just the overall, you know, feminine qualities that you would think, you know, that you may or may not be aware of. It's very trusting. It's very expansive. It's very um, connected to your, yeah, sensual side and your emotions. So internalized. So think internalized. It's, it's the essence of who you are. The masculine energy within us is very assertive it's very action oriented it's very um, results driven it's very tied to the logical mind it provides structure it provides stability it provides foundation it's very protective it's very courageous um, it's grounding it's also very tied to the analytical mind and powerful, whereas the feminine is empowered from within, the masculine is powerful in the 3D, like is strong, right? So it's an externalized form of power. It deals with the physical realm, where the feminine obviously is the subtle realm, the energy. It's very stable. So that stability and that structure. So you can see we need both in our life. We need to be tapped into our own. The feminine is also very connected to our heart space, right? So the, men, the masculine is very connected to the mental body. 
<clears throat> and so the feminine is connected to her heart space and her senses and empathic. So we need to be connected to our value systems in order to be connected to our feminine essence and our intuition and really being that trusting of our intuition and our feminine essence and, and things like that. But at the same time, the masculine energy, the protective energy, the courageous energy, the, the structure and the stability energy needs to be able to draw healthy boundaries. When you come into alignment with your values, when you see a woman that really owns her value walk into a room and she just is confident within her own skin and she embraces either her sensuality or sexuality or just who she is or she just owns her worth and it's an energy that is exudes from her you can sense it it's not even something you don't even have to have there it's just a sensing it's an energy it's an ownership of her divine worthiness and it's um she trusts herself. She knows herself. She's connected to her heart. She's fully embodied in her feminine. She has a strong, integrated masculine energy. She's not a yes woman. She's not saying yes to people when she means no. She's not ex overextending her time or her energy, depleting herself energetically wise or, or in any way, right? She has strong, healthy boundaries that honors her um, sacred space and her energy and her heart. She doesn't mess around in relationships that are not serving her, whether that be professional or romantic or whatever. She has the ability to speak her truth. She has the ability to come from a place of alignment and really um, show up authentically, unapologetically, regardless of what people are going to think or say about it, because she's not looking for that external validation. She already has the validation from within. So she doesn't need the external validation. So she can show up in her true confidence, divine confidence, not fake confidence like what I had when I was going through my, trying to put up this mirage of perfectionism and trying to pretend I was confident, even though inside I was crumbling, struggling, forcing and all the things. True confidence, true divine confidence, trusting in herself, trusting in life, trusting in the divine, trusting in her soul. Um, she has a strong masculine integrated energy. And again, two sides of the same coin, just circle back to the beginning of the call. When you come into alignment with your feminine energy, your masculine energy will start to come into alignment instead of being distorted. So no more overprotecting or overgiving, depleting yourself from an empty cup with a clear lack of boundaries, right? The masculine energy instead will draw a healthy boundary that'll that's permeable it allows the good stuff in it won't be a wall that blocks your heart like me and in the past right it won't be a full-on wall it won't be in that over protection mode when the distorted energy is when you're in your distorted energy masculine goes into overdrive to protect and that'll look like over giving over protecting over boundarying where it's a wall instead of a boundary it'll overdo it'll over action and this is where the hustle comes in and the stress and the burnout and the overwhelm because you're stuck in that masculine energy of go, 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 do, 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 more, 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 over, over, everything's overcompensating. So masculine distorted energy is an overcompensating energy when it's distorted. When it's in alignment and it's dancing with the feminine that's in alignment, it's a healthy boundary that honors your worth, that honors your time. It holds the sacred space, that healthy boundary. It holds a sacred space for your feminine to, to blossom, for your feminine heart to open, for your, you know, for, for you to feel in, fully in, in your body and feel safe. If your masculine is not drawing those lines, then your feminine won't feel safe to open. Your feminine has to feel safe. We talked about it at the beginning. Your feminine desperately wants to, to feel safe. And in order to do that, the masculine energy has to come into alignment and, and draw those healthy boundaries to create that space. So what happens in life is when we come into alignment or recognition of something that's out of alignment and we want, uh, and we're being guided to change and we're being guided to shift or transmute that, the action will arise and the action then takes courage. The masculine energy is courageous, takes courageous masculine energy to draw a boundary to let's say, end a relationship or leave a job or move to a new place or change. There's an action, a courageous action required 
which is what the masculine, which is what brings the masculine energy now into alignment. If that masculine energy is not courageous enough to show up and um, protect the authentic truth of the feminine that's coming through, then you will repeat the toxic pattern. The masculine energy, when the masculine energy finds, and this is why there's there's so much talk about the feminine energy rising, but I can say I could easily call this divine masculine rising. <laughs> I could easily call this the divine masculine rising. It's actually going to be one of my titles here coming up for something because it really this journey has been about integrating my sacred masculine energy more than any, I mean, obviously coming into alignment with my feminine, but there, it's, it's 50, 50, it's two sides of the same coin. We can't dismiss the other. It's really integrating into sacred masculine energy, protecting my own heart, creating my own safety, creating my own sacred space, setting my healthy boundaries, being able to say no when I mean no from a place of worthiness and assertiveness, but not feeling like I'm, no, you know, I'm no longer being a people pleaser, you know, an overgiver and a people pleaser and all the things. That takes a lot of courage. Because when your identity is wrapped up in needing that external validation from people, so I'm going to go overgive here and I'm going to go people please here because I need them to come back and tell me good things so I can love myself. Like when that is no longer a thing and you can courageously just authentically show up and everything else has to react to that. Your world has to react to that. People will start to treat you differently in your environment. They will respect those boundaries, especially if you're in a relationship dynamic. If you're not respecting your own boundaries, you're not going to attract, let's say in my situation, a masculine partner that respects those boundaries. There's a level of respect there that is required to really own your own worthiness and your own self-respect in order to have that reflected back to you in a, in a partnership of any kind, whether that be work or romantic or anything like that. But the rest of the world has to repopulate to this. So people will start to treat you differently. People will sense this energetic shift some people will phase out, new people will fly in or situations or careers or whatever the case may be. Your job is to surrender and trust the process instead of trying to micromanage and control it from the ego and take the aligned actions that come up with courage despite the fear because the ego is just there to keep us stuck in this familiar pattern, even though the familiar pattern is really the opposite of what you want in a lot of cases such as with mine, like the ego would want to keep me stuck in the relationship that I had to end the engagement. It wasn't serving me, but the ego would love to keep me stuck there and would love to keep me hustling. The ego wants to continue to keep you safe. So it's, it's a great tool, but what's happening here on this journey is we're not really a hundred percent getting rid of the ego. That, that can't really happen. We're still having a sense of identity to some degree, as long as we're here on earth. But what's happening is the ego is dissolving and surrendering to the divine will. So ego will is surrendering to the divine will. And so you'll still take action. There'll still be desires. There's still going to things, things will still arise that you want to do in your life and that you want to achieve and, and experience. And those are all perfect, but it's going to be under control of the divine will versus the egoic will, which is constantly trying to manipulate control force or compete against the world basically but long story short it wants the ego wants to keep us safe in those familiar patterns even if those familiar patterns are the opposite job career life relation life experience relationship living environment whatever that case may be so it's those courageous actions that are often rooted also in trust and faith and that's part of the feminine is the trusting and the faith mirrored you know married with the courageous action now you have a winning, magical, potent, alchemical formula for change and transformation in your life because you're mixing sacred masculine energy that is only bubbling up from a desire within. It's no longer coming from the external world trying to force something or manipulate something out of fear or lack or scarcity or any of those other fear-based driven tendencies. Instead, your masculine energy is coming up as a response to the feminine rising up and really claiming her worthiness and saying, this is what I value, this is what I desire, and this is what I know in my heart, and this is not in alignment, so I'm going to do something about that, and masculine energy coming in with courageous action to do so. So when you have courageous action, sacred masculine action mixed with feminine trust and faith in the unknown, 
The ego needs to know everything. It wants familiarity and certainty about everything because it fears the unknown. When you can embrace the unknown and realize that the unknown is actually where all things are possible in the unknown. And the unknown is where anything is possible. If we try to stay just stuck in our very bird's eye view that the ego gives us, that's a very constricting energy. Just you can feel it. Just as I say that, it sounds very, it feels very constricting. Feminine is very expansive. Remember, that's one of the feminine qualities. Feminine is very expansive and trusting. What do you have to trust about? You have to trust in the unknown. You have to trust in the unseen. You have to trust in the formless. You have to trust in the energy and the spiritual aspect of life. So we'll see this duality in our entire existence. This is, a, this is how we embody it within our own being, right? But it, think about this for a second. When you think of like even, this is just taking a, another step, but when you look at the world itself, it's really made up of energy. You know, science has proven this, that even if you take a molecule and you zoom in with a microscope to the most subatomic particle and the minor quarks of it, you're going to see 99.99999% spaciousness of energy that is appearing right now to be solid and vibrating at certain frequencies. So even the world that we see right now is both feminine and masculine qualities. It's structure and form because we can see it. We can take, we can touch it. And it's also simultaneously energy. It's also simultaneously the essence that makes up everything. So we're living in a sea of this dualistic expression, feminine, masculine, up, down, left, right, front, back. We're living good, bad, left, right. You know, we're living in this dualistic expression. We call it life and we see it through our eyes as this tangible world. But what's really this tangible world is also the unseen physically manifesting in our eyes right now as a house or a laptop or a cup or whatever. It's both simultaneously, just like the energy within us, the feminine and masculine is both simultaneously. If you look at the yin yang sign within the feminine piece of it, you'll see a little spot of the masculine and within the masculine dominant piece of it, you'll see a spot a piece of the feminine. So even though we can predominantly resonate with one quality more than another, one essence more than another in this embodied human life, uh, we carry both energies. So, so does that give us a little bit more clear depiction of like feminine and masculine energy or, yeah, you know, in general, the qualities of feminine and masculine? There's also, you know, the, 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 when we think of feminine, it's, light and you know sensual and receiving receptive and things like that feminine energy is not passive feminine energy is not um a doormat energy it's not a i'm gonna be small and, and fragile and soft and flowery and and that's that's a very sort of toxic look at the feminine energy the feminine energy also has a dark feminine energy so there's light and dark the dark feminine energy is very um it's a very fiery energy it's very transformative it's very it's very um passionate and wild and primal and um sensual and that's what's referred to as the dark feminine energy it's not bad in any way it's just duality light and dark so you have the sensual receptive um nurturing energy of the feminine and then you have the deep transformational, um, alchemical, primal energy of the feminine that's connected to all things. I mean, even, even your cycle is connected to the moon cycle, right? So it's like that, that, that transformational cyclical energy. And so when we're going through the transformational process and there's things that are the death and rebirth process that I was mentioning before, where there's tower moments and shit hits the fan and starts to crumble away, but you're really just building a better foundation for stuff. That transformative energy, the fire element is very transformative, right? It represents transformation and that cycle of death and rebirth that you go through is really where we embrace that dark feminine energy. You know, the, fa the fire element is a transmuter and it's that fiery element this is where you hear you know phoenix rising from the ashes 
right? A rebirth occurs. A new, a death of something always leads to a new beginning. And this death process that leads to a rebirth and a new beginning, when you're going through that process, you're accessing a lot, a lot of the dark feminine qualities. And it's just a way to say that it's the dualistic side of the feminine. So I just didn't want to leave just saying that the feminine is always like sensual and receptive. And, you know, it's also very fierce. It's very transformative. And it's got a lot of that fiery element that that is related to um, death and rebirth. And also dealing with the shadow, the dark feminine will, in order to fully embody our, our feminine essence, we, we will fully have to integrate our shadow. And that's the dark feminine works through that phase um, of transformation. Because it's oftentimes the parts of us we don't want to see or the parts of us that we avoid or the parts that just don't feel good, like ways in which we've betrayed our own self, self-abandonment, how we've, you know, not taken care of ourselves, or things like that. Like all of the different ways that we hold on to any of the lower emotions like guilt and shame and things like that, um, that hides in our shadow. So the shadow just means we're not consciously wanting to shine the light on it and transmute that. And so what happens is those things that stay in the shadows that we don't consciously shine the light of awareness on um, continue to have power over us. And it really just takes shining the conscious light of awareness on it and allowing it to move through you, which is part of that death and rebirth transformational process and what the dark feminine energy relates to. It's really that process that allows you to really, the, the shadows lose all their power over you. So I just want to touch on the dark. I should do a whole training maybe on the dark feminine one day. I just wanted to touch on that because I can't really talk about the feminine qualities without touching on that as well. Um, so we have a few minutes left. I'd love to know if anybody has any questions or comments. Um, okay, if they got, if they resonated with this, got value. Um, I'm going to look at the chat box right now. Feel free to raise your hand if you'd like. Um, let me go ahead and look. Yeah, feminine is not weak or passive undemanding no needs like that's not there's a difference between having true um just divine needs that come through like desires and having neediness so distorted feminine energy has neediness where you're constantly seeking it outside of yourself but um that doesn't mean we still don't you're you're not like passive and undemanding and just like oh like a little flower over here with like, you know, I'm just going to be pretty and be quiet and I'm not going to say anything. And, um, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's not, that's a distorted view of the feminine. Does <clears throat> so make sense? Yeah. Death leading to another rebirth. I love that. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. It's so fun. Um, I mean, sometimes it's not when you're going through it, but when I recently went through a major transformational shift and um, yeah, this spirit is amazing. Life is amazing. I was, it was everything that uh, even the symbols and the synchronicities around it, just fully being able to trust the whole process and being able to shed the layers that, uh, you know, shed the layers and allow everything to purge and, and really step into a whole new cycle of being, a whole new way of being. I mean, I, I feel like it's, it's just a beautiful, mysterious, and also um, bittersweet part of life. It's like life is everything, right? Life is all of it. Like one of the things is if we go through life thinking it's only supposed to be, if here's the pendulum, good and bad, right? We're only supposed to experience light. We're only supposed to experience good. We're only supposed to experience joy. And we don't allow the other ones to surface. And so we reject the other emotions or we reject aspects of life. We say, nope, this is life over here. And that's not. Um, what we do is we spend our time fighting life, like fighting life itself which is a very restrictive controlling place to be when we surrender and we allow it all to come up. That's when it actually can purge what's no longer necessary and come into even, you know, alignment with actually what you truly desire naturally versus fighting against what is coming up 
and thinking, no, I can't, I can't deal with that, or I can't see that, or I can't allow that. So I'm only going to stay over here and I'm going to put love and light on everything. I'm just going to exist over here in joy and anything that's not joy, I'm going to suppress or reject. It actually can create a cycle of long, it can create a suffering or a cycle of discontent for longer than if you just surrender it all allow it all to surface, allow it all to purge and be released so you can come back into natural alignment with your divine essence because it's actually rejecting any part of life is rejecting life itself. Rejecting any part of life is rejecting life itself. And so that really takes a level of trust and surrender and courage to know that no matter what, life is supporting you. So thank you, ladies. I know um, we're just at the hour. I will be sending out a replay um you're you're welcome and i see your beautiful comments i haven't had a chance to review them all so i will it's the first thing i look at when the recording drops i'm going to be sending you out the replay and i will also send out a link to embody the empress which is a membership um, it's something that is newly created if you're interested in that you can check that out let me know if you have any questions if you want to dive deeper into this and you want to have I can just share real quick for everybody that's still here. It's um, it's a membership. You can cancel it any time. It's month to month. It's super affordable. And what we do every month is we have an exclusive training on feminine and masculine energy and really working through the divine feminine archetypes and their shadows. And then uh, you also have a sacred circle every month as well. And so that's where you can commute, you know, be in community with other women on the path and get questions answered and share what's coming up for you as you move through the process. There'll be shadow work, there'll be embodiment practices and things like that. So if that resonates with you at all and you want to check it out, it'll be in the email that I send later today. So just make sure you get your, you know, check your email and I hopefully will see you soon. Bye now.